Today, we're ranking the top 10 West Indies all-rounders of all time. Are you ready for this? Mark, thank you for joining me again, brother. Good night, Nabil. Thanks for having me back on the show. Let's get right into the nitty-gritty. Number 10. What pick are we going with for number 10? We're going to go with Jerry Gomez, all-rounder from Trinidad and Tobago. Selected for West Indies team, 1939, tour of England. Played 29 test matches for West Indies. 1,243 runs, the best of 101. He took 58 wickets, ball in his medium pace. Best of 7 for 55. Was accomplished fielder as well. Uh, a good cricketer and a good human being, one of the stalwarts of West Indies cricket, Jerry Gomez. Born on June 24th, 1919 and passing away on April 8th, 1996. Gomez, as Mark mentioned, was a versatile all-rounder during his playing days. He was part of the West Indies team that toured England in 1950, a series that is famous for the West Indies' first test match victory on English soil. Let's get into now number nine, Mark. Who are we going with on number nine, man? Number nine is Colly Smith from Jamaica, talented batsman all around there. On his test there before West Indies, he scored 104. Uh, he played 26 test matches, scored 1,331 runs, best of 168, average of 31.69, and he got 48 wickets, a best of Five and ninety was it really one of the bright spots in West Indies cricket in the early fifties? He passed away from a, a car accident in nineteen fifty nine, which was a huge loss to West Indies cricket. This man, from all reports, could have been one of the greatest West Indies cricketers in the making. His Smith made his Test debut for West Indies in nineteen fifty five. Quickly established himself as a promising player with both bat and ball. In his short international career, he was known for his aggressive batting style, capable of changing the course of the game with his powerful hitting. And as a bowler, his off spin was effective, often used by his captains to break partnerships and control. So that was our number nine. Who are we going with for pick number eight? I'm going with Darren Sammy from St. Lucia, uh, Windward Islands, West Indies captain, the man who basically brought the West Indies together in the low point of West Indies cricket. Played 38 test matches, scored 1,323 runs, a best of 106. 84 wickets, a best of 7 for 66 in England. Played 128 one-day matches score 1,871 runs, best of 89, average of 24.94, 81 wickets and best of 4 for 26. Darren Sammy, a man, player's player, always seems to unite the team, have good charisma, always have a good attitude, always with a smile. He did his best captain for West Indies, leading them out of the Belgiums from way back in 2008 and onwards until he was sacked as West Indies captain. He has been praised for his sportsmanship, his positive attitude, and his role as an ambassador for cricket in the Caribbean, and not just in the Caribbean, all over the world. People in Pakistan love him, PSL. He's, he's a love coach, and, and they enjoy his company because he can relate to all the different types of players. Number eight, I think it's a great pick, man. He's a very impactful player for the Windies, especially with his leadership. Number seven, we're going to move on to now. Mark, want to let the viewers know, man, our pick number seven. Yes, number seven, Roger Harper, the off spinner from Ghana. Tall, lanky off spinner, you know, with a nice high looping action was a very good fielder outside of the wicket. Good off spinner, good low order batsman down the order. He played 25 matches for West Indies, 535 runs, best of 74. Picked up 46 wickets, best of 6 for 57. Back in the 80s when he played, West Indies always used a four-prong pace attack. A lot of times he came in just to balance the team or to do a holding job from one end. The limited opportunities he got, he made an impact. Very good fielder, good catcher, very quick. Quick, what more can I say about Roger Harper? Yeah, Roger Harper from Guyana who played during the late 80s and the early 90s, born on March 17, 1963. He was renowned for his exceptional fielding, as you mentioned, Mark, right arm off spin bowling and useful lower order batting. His athletic fielding set new standards in international cricket, making him one of the most outstanding fielders of his time. Harper's bowling was characterized by his height, which allowed him to extract a bounce from pitch and his ability to bowl a tight line and length. Additionally, he contributed valuable runs with the bat, often coming in down the order and that was our number seven roger harper let us know what you guys think of our pick so far in the comments we want to know where you guys are watching from so you know let us know which parts or which cities you guys are watching from we're going to try and shout out comments in the next video for you guys and love to know where some of the viewers are from let's move on to number six man yes number six is Dwayne bravo the trinidad and tobago all-rounder played 40 test matches for west indies scored 2200 runs the best of 113 average of 
21.42, picked up 86 wickets, best of 6 for 55. Brilliant fielder, a very jovial player, always a man who always involved in the action. Bravo had a different type of energy in the West Indies team. It's a pity that his career was cut short because he could have offered more to West Indies cricket, especially at a time in low period with batting as well. One of the best batsmen in his early days if he had concentrated on his batting, but his bowling developed and he became this dynamic all-rounder, known for his T20 pros as well. But I would just like to stick to him for his contribution as an all-rounder in test cricket. He celebrated for his ability as a death bowler in the white ball format. But again, he was charismatic personality. That was our number six, guys. Let's move on to number five. Number five is... Former captain Jason Holder from Barbados, a right arm fast medium bowler, known for his accurate bowling, always used that impeccable line and length, played 64 test matches, 157 wickets, best of 6 for 42, average of 29.21, 2,797 runs, best of 202 not out, that was a superb double century, versus England, average of 29.44, and what we all should keep in consideration, a lot of these West Indies top all-rounders didn't play too many test matches. Some played 40 test matches. Only a couple played 93, 100 test matches. But majority of those players played 20 tests, 30 tests. If you compare into world class all around the, say, example, like Imran Kandi and Bertram Kapil Dev, all those had a long longevity in their career. But most of these West Indian all rounders career was never a long career. Only, only a few play over 50 test matches. Where do you see Jason Holder going from here on, Mark? I know his focus mostly has turned to T20 cricket, and I know this video is probably not about that, but a little light on your perspective of what his thoughts will be now on test cricket. I think if he get a recall to the test team, he would finish his career playing test cricket because the T20 cricket didn't really go too well for him. Even he played RPL and a lot of those T20 tournaments, you know, he got taken to the cleaners a lot of times, team lose matches on his bowling last over or penultimate over. So I think you would see Jason Holder play more test cricket in the future for West Indies. That was your number five, Jason Holder. Let us know your thoughts on these picks. Mark, top four. I'll let the viewer know, man. Yes. Number four is Larry Constantine, the Trinidad and Tobago all-rounder. He was one of the pioneers of West Indies cricket in West Indies started when West Indies started to play test cricket. He played from 1928 to 1939, 18 test matches, 635 runs, 58 wickets, a best of five for 75. And he played before the war and after the war. Uh, from all reports. He was a fantastic bowler, good medium pacer, accurate bowler, bowler mean in swinger and mean out swinger. And with the bat, he was a good low order batsman or middle order batsman for West Indies. Later known as Baron Constantine of Maravel in Trinidad and Tobago and Nelson in the County Palatine of Lancaster was a pioneering Trinidadian cricketer, lawyer, politician, and statesman born on September 21st, 1901 and passing away on on July 1st, 1971. Contributions as a lawyer and politician as well had an impact in Trinidad and Tobago and, and served as a high commissioner to the United Kingdom. And in 1969, made a life peer, becoming the first person of African descent to receive this honor in the British Parliament. Again, Constantine's legacy extends beyond his achievements in cricket to his impactful work in the field of law, politics, and civil rights, making him a trailblazing figure in both sports and social justice. So not just on the field, Mark, but off the field as well he was he was a superstar man yes he was a, a man who had presence and well respected um, in society and tried to lead by example one of the early you could say activists in trinidad and tobago in politics larry constantine number four for us let's get into the top three and this is one of the ones that we thought that you guys may find a bit controversial uh, number three mark let the viewers know or pick number three yes number three is kind of walk up one of the three w's he's a wicked keeper batsman and he bowled a little medium pace as well and reason why i went with Clyde walker a lot of times fans don't look as at a wicket keeper as an all-rounder but a wicket keeper is an all-rounder who keeps wicket and bats so that's two aspect of the game he's involved in now he played 44 test matches for west indies 3798 runs best of 120 uh, as wicket keeper he took 53 catches and 11 stumping and as a bowler he picked up 11 test wickets so that's one of the main reasons why i have clyde walker our number three all-rounder yeah absolutely and he's gonna make our top wicket keepers list as well 
obviously. His batting was characterized by his strength and timing, making him capable of dominating bowling attacks around the world. Beyond his playing days, Clyde Walcott contributed significantly to cricket as an administrator and coach, holding various positions, including chairman of the International Cricket Council. Number three, Clyde Walcott. Let us know what you guys think for this pick in the comments. And again, let us know in the comments where you guys are watching from. We'd love to know. Top two, Mark. We're getting into the top two, man. So let the viewers know our pick number two. Number two is Carl Hooper, the guy in an all-rounder, mainly a batsman, 102 test matches, one of the most elegant batsmen to play for West Indies in West Indies test history. 5,762 runs, average of 36.46. Some would say they would have loved to see his average at 40 for his ability. Best of 233, 114 wickets, best of 5 for 26, 115 catches, and the one day arena, 227 matches, 5761 runs, average of 35.94, best of 113. He was one of the first or one of the earlier West Indian cricketers to complete the triple 100 catches, 1000 runs, and 100 wickets. So that's why I rate Carl Hooper very highly as one of our West Indies greatest all round of all times. Before, when he started in his youth days, he bowled a little medium pace. Then he turned to his off-rate bowling and was always effective for West Indies. They call him the man with the golden arm. Anytime West Indies would need a breakthrough, the captain or himself, when he was captain, bring himself into the attack and would always break the partnership. So to me, Carl Hooper goes down as one of the greatest West Indies all round of all times. Coming at number two. I used to love this guy growing up watching him. He used to be one of my favorite West Indies players. He made his debut for West Indies 1987 and quickly became a mainstay in the team across formats. And he possessed the rare ability to change the complexion of the game with both bat and a ball. With a career that spanned over 15 years, he had longevity in his game, played over 102 test matches, 227 internationals, and just amassing runs and wickets along the way. And the greats of the game and one one of my personal favorites and a legend of the game, Carl Hooper, comes in at number two. And watching to this point, you know, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Apparently helps out the algorithm. So we want to make sure that this video gets out to the most viewers. So make sure to smash that like button. Check out our links in the description. If you want to create content like this, we use StreamYard on air. I'll put the link of StreamYard on air in the description. Go check it out. Mark, again, we're going to do the same thing with number one here, man. And we're going to give them the details. Don't name the person. And let's see if the viewers can guess it and we'll announce it right at the Yes, 93 test matches, 8,032 runs, 26 test match centuries, an average of 57.78, remarkable average. He got 235 test wickets, best of six for 73. Average of 34.03, a bit high, but 109 catches. Captain, a brilliant captain, who always tried to move the game forward. He was known as a gambler who took chances and risks trying to, to get a win for West Indies cricket team. And he guessed this, guys? I mean, I'm sure you guys have guessed it at this point. Mark's given you guys so many hints. And yeah, Mark, let's announce it, man, who is our number one. And I'm sure the viewers know it by this point as well. Yes, the greatest cricketer who ever played the game, Sir Gary Sobers. Gary Sobers, that was it, guys. And if you guys haven't checked out our great top 10 rankings on the top 10, and West Indies victories of all time. You'll find it on the screen right here. Make sure to check it out. And Bill Khan and Mark Audin from the Reverse Scoop signing off. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.